download PyCoin for it on any Linux with just uh, apt install PyCoin. And then it brings up just this. You don't have to type in the Python 3 if you're on a Linux distribution, but this is a virtual machine I have here. But you can use this KU module to get any Bitcoin private key. You type in the private key, it will give you the public key. And like I said, if we type in the private key of one, we get the first private key of Bitcoin. Okay, this is our X and Y pair. If you type in the private key of two, you get the second one. Three, you get the third one. This is the uh, tiny EC module in Python. You can anybody can import this module with PIP install tiny EC, and you uh, input the hex values of your parameters for the curve. So for SECP two five six K one, you have to represent it in a hex value because that's how the format is read by the program. The generator G, this is the compressed version. This is the uncompressed version. Okay, you can tell that because this one starts with a 0, 2, meaning that the Y coordinate is even. The 0, 3 means the Y coordinate is odd for any X and Y coordinate on the elliptic curve. Okay, uh, uncompressed public key starts with 0, 4. Okay, it's the same X coordinate, but your Y coordinate is specified in an uncompressed public key. Okay, this is the generator, the original generator. If you multiply this generator by your private key, you will get a resulting public key, which is another X and Y coordinate. It's not an integer. You will not get an integer as a result of running this function. So the whole thing is it, it, you can't divide a point by another point. And I'll show you that it'll bring up an error. And I, I can show you that right here. Python virtual machine and um, notice it doesn't have a public key specified is a little key I always use let's go ahead and set that private key to k1 we're gonna pretend later that we don't know this key but we're gonna set that key to k1 okay we're just gonna leave that right there for right now p n a b g and h which p a b g n and h are all right here they're all the same as what you see in this module here okay now if I use this curve function defined right here by the parameters listed above I say curve dot G times and we're gonna use my k1 key it gives me my public key if I say that same thing over here in KU that same pr private key I get the same public key back as you can see by the x and the y coordinate you curve dot g times one is the same thing as the first public key okay so the generator point private key is one so if you were to divide by the generator point you would be dividing by the private key of one so if you take one scalar private key and divide it by the private key of one you're just dividing a, a number by the number one you're just gonna get the same number back you're not gonna get a resulting uh, key by from this so if we're gonna say our public key is our curve dot G times k1 the one that belongs to the private key that I've it's a this is a 254-bit value, but it's still a, uh, it was chosen by SHA-256 randomly. It's, it's inverse by saying curve dot G times N minus K1. You can see that with a matching X coordinate, but mismatching Y coordinates. Okay, but if I have K1 and I say N minus K1, this is its inverse private key. This is its inverse public key. This is its inverse private key. Private, public keys are X and Y coordinates. Private keys are integers. Okay, so you can't do math between a public key and a private key. And I can show you that by saying um, we're going to set our pub key to this. Okay, and now we're going to say pub key times 2. Okay. It gives us an X and Y coordinate back. 
you can't say poke key divided by two. It doesn't know what to do with that. You, you can't take a point and an integer and divide. Okay, it won't let you do that. What multiply is here, it's just specifying how many times to apply this function curve. Your multiplication is just repetitive addition. So you're, you're, you're adding this curve to itself the number of times you specify by your private key. That's what you're doing when you create a public key. You're specifying how many times to add the generator. You would have to know the private key that belongs to the public key to know what reference point that is. Right? So if you didn't know this number, if I just gave you my, my public key, if I just gave you this X and Y coordinate and said, okay, find my, find my private key, you couldn't find this value because the thing is, you can't find the original G, G, the original generator, specified by this here. You could not find this using multiplication from, from the public key. Now we're going to set K2 to its inverse. That's K2. Now we'll say curve.g times K2. Okay, and then curve.g times K1. We're going to go from our K1 value and we're going to find the original generator using addition. Because that only because we're on the same curve. So plug key inverse plug key. Okay, now we got those right there. So now I want to, if I, if I were to add those two together, plus inverse plug key, it equals zero. Which means it's the same thing as curve dot g times n. n is your zero position. Here you go. Curve dot g times n plus one, you get the same thing as curve dot g times one. There's your first collision. Okay. n plus one is not a valid point though. And put it into ku. Pycoin doesn't know what to do with it because it's bigger than n. The first thing that ECDSA does is it checks to see if it's less than n. So all keys have to be less than n, otherwise they're going to be a collision key with a lower number. Another thing we can we can prove that it's a valid point on the curve here with our y squared equals x cubed plus seven. See pub key dot x times pub key dot x times pub key dot x. Okay, modulo p. Now we're going to say pub key dot y times pub key dot y modulo p. It's the same number plus 7, right? So if we go back up here and we say x cubed plus 7 is the same thing x cubed plus 7 is equal to y squared. True for all valid public keys on the elliptic curve. This big ass number right here, that's how many times you'd have to iterate in order to reference any one of the keys. We're going to change this. Remember we have Alice and Bob right here. And we're going to create a secure channel between the two. You can just pick any two points at random, right? We're going to use addition to create a secure channel. So let's say Alice chose 16. And Bob luckily didn't choose her inverse and chose 4. Okay. He can tell her S. She can tell him G. And they can find that and go to that. And go. And they're going to swap positions and go the same. Go their number. So Bob over here is going to go to G. And he knows 4. Right. So he's going to go to G and go 1, 2, 3, 4 forward. And Alice is going to go over to S and she's going to move 16 from hers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now they're at the same place. And they can communicate over a secure channel at the public key C. Let's set Alice. We'll set this to A now. Um, we'll say N. Uh, is greater than a yes okay good minus I want to make sure the binary of a is 256 bits 
So 256 bit value. Actually, we'll say Alice private key equals A. Okay? Bob private key equals that number. Okay? Um, now we have Alice's private key and Bob's private key. Alice is public key. I'll say Bob Bob key. Alice and Bob have two different X and Y coordinates. Now if you swap places and go the number of positions of their key. Okay. What Alice does is she sends Bob her public key. And Bob sends Alice his public key. And Alice multiplies her or Bob's public key by her private key and vice versa Bob multiplies Alice's private key or excuse me public key by his private key and they'll end up the same spot so we'll take Bob's pub key times Alice's private key get this XY coordinate Alice of key times Bob private key and they're at the same spot if you knew these private keys you can confirm this and confirm you where you are on the numbered line by taking Alice's private key by Bob's private key modulo n And then do curve dot G times that. You'll see we had the same spot. Like I said, it, it's uh, it's only if you knew the private keys though that you would be able to know uh, find any one of those keys. So only Alice and Bob know their keys only, and they they now know the shared key. Um, and the actually they have two shared keys. The original generator and their new shared key position you can change this generator hex change the hex to whatever public key you're looking for so say we wanted to find Alice's uh, public key right we would just need the hex value of this and the hex value of that and put it right here and then you take G and multiply it by the integer that you're trying to do it and, and it will work the same way as the modular format the mod n multiplication of the integers works if you're going to find a collision you have to have the reference collisions you have to have a long list of them and that's the whole point behind the security of ecdsa is that it's extremely memory intensive it's like okay we well, still can't figure out what the private key is because you still have to know what that original number is so it, it would you could really even find anything is to have some kind of reference list on 2 to the power of 256 and then our number n if you take and subtract those two that's a freaking huge number 